the Palm Beach Civic Association expands its communication outreach with a state-of-the-art television studio. We call it Studio 33480, the zip code for the beautiful island of Palm Beach. Sponsored by Finley Galleries, our goal is to bring you in-depth interviews with the most colorful and knowledgeable personalities on the island. And now, our host. Hi, I'm William Kelly, and I'm your host this week on the Palm Beach Civic Association's Studio 33480. With me today is Daryl Hoffines, an award-winning journalist and real estate editor at the Palm Beach Daily News. Uh, Daryl regularly breaks news on the high dollar sales on the island. He also pins a weekly real estate column named Beyond the Hedges. Daryl, welcome. Hi, how are you? Very well. It's, it's great to have you here on Studio 33480. Same here. Before we get started talking about real estate, first, if you would, please just tell us a little bit about your professional background and how you came to join the team at the Daily News. Yes, next um, October, not this one, but the next, it'll be um, 20 years at the uh, Shiny Sheet. Um, and that's amazing uh, to me that uh, in an industry that is so um, volatile that I've uh, enjoyed a, a long career at the Shiny Sheet. It just speaks of how special that paper really is. Uh, I'm from Texas originally, spent most of my career in magazine journalism in Texas, um, came to Florida in um, 1991, um, edited a paper in Pompano Beach and the old Boca News. I was the managing editor there. And um, after that, in 2003, joined the staff of the Palm Beach Daily News and have been writing about um, real estate since. This real estate market that we're in now, um unprecedented, unlike anything that we have ever seen in Palm Beach. And I, I know it's kept you very busy. It's undoubtedly been an exciting time to be doing what you're doing. And, uh, you know, 2020, a record was set. Island-wide residential sales hit $2.4 The next year, 2021, it nearly doubles uh, to four billion. What's been going on from your perspective? How how do you explain it? It has been a wild ride. It has been a roller coaster ride. It has launched into the stratosphere. It has hit the <laughs> ozone layer. It has rushed down the race ray. It has shifted into gear faster than a Lamborghini. <laughs> I have run out of um, metaphors. uh, metaphors to be able to describe what's gone on in Palm Beach real estate. And the nice thing about being at the shiny sheet for so long is that I've been able to sort of put it into perspective. And the numbers you just quoted are amazing. That um, just as telling in 2019, before the pandemic, we were at 1.2 billion in residential sales. And then as you just said, by the end of 2021, we had hit four. So we went from 1.2 to 4 billion in um, two, basically two years. Hmm. Uh, and it's not just the, we've had just a tremendous amount of transactions, but it's this price escalation that we've seen uh, over uh, and above anything we had ever seen. You used the word unprecedented, and that is exactly what this is. And what we've seen is uh, one of the sales reports that came out uh showed that between January of 2020 and June of 2022, about where we are right now, 37 single-family homes in Palm Beach had changed hands twice or more just between the beginning of 2020 Amazing. and June. And the average rate of appreciation in those sales was 77%. So Astounding. Uh, astounding. And, um, you know, one of the things that we do uh, at the Daily News – I always tell people I don't write about real estate, I write about people. And that's what we have seen over and over and over is just an influx of people um, seeking to enjoy the benefits of Palm Beach, whatever those benefits might be since the pandemic began. And this sort of mad rush has had major effects on um, how the real estate market not only behaved during the last two and a half years, but where it, where it is now. And inventory just wasn't equal to the demand, and then this led to bidding wars and et cetera. That's exactly right. We've talked a lot um, uh, amongst ourselves when I talk to the real estate sources that I have that no one has seen this before. Uh, these bidding wars, there were always bidding wars for important properties in Palm Beach, but we're, we're seeing bidding wars for fairly small homes. Um, 
and for condominiums, mm. which we've never seen. Basically, um, the idea is that everything in Palm Beach is valuable. It's always been valuable. There is a limited supply. We have about 9,500 um, individual real estate parcels on the island. Um, and that's not a lot of houses when you think about a, a, a what you might think is in Palm Beach, and that's total houses, land, um, multifamily. But it's not a lot. Mm -hmm. And when you have, you know, uh, thousands and thousands of people scrambling to get one of those properties, um, it can be sort of shocking when everybody's competing for the same uh, piece of the pie. The paper has been laser focused in its coverage of the real estate market. It's almost impossible to pick up a copy of the Daily News without seeing at least one real estate story on the cover. Uh, tell us about that. Why, why has there been such a great emphasis and such comprehensive coverage? One thing that the shiny sheet has always done is cover real estate. And if you think about where we are, you know, Palm Beach has always been about real estate. Florida has always been about real estate. It's why uh, the state was settled, certainly the southern part of it. Uh, it all had to do with land and Flagler discovering um, just uncharted land down here, even though there were settlements, um, and transforming through land purchases and spurring development uh, in the Flagler era uh, just unbridled growth, interest, people coming to Palm Beach, right. the society said. Uh, we go a couple of decades ahead to the 1920s where the boom really began with the Florida land boom. Palm Beach exploded. The only thing that I have ever been able to um, equate to where we are right now is the, is the boom of the 1920s uh, when – you know, building permits soared, um, hotels went up, uh, you know, prices soared. Um, a lot of stuff was developed on speculation. Unfortunately, we know how the boom ended. It it did not end very well for Palm Beach, uh, and the Great Depression followed shortly afterward. Um, hmm. I don't think we're there in any way as far as uh, where we are right now, but that sort of frenzied activity of the 20s is what we're seeing in some sort of counterpart here. But this is like... You know, I think in many ways, if not as historic, even more historic, just because of the pricing we're seeing. Probably the most exciting part of it has been with the single, uh, single family homes. You've written stories about houses selling, uh, and then a few months later they're flipped, and the owner makes a profit of millions of dollars. Yeah, and we had not seen that uh, in short time frames, except very sporadically before the pandemic. Well, what happened during the pandemic, as far as real estate, and it's documented across the country, but especially in Palm Beach in March 2020, um, the first headlines begin to really appear, and by mid March, the town had issued its first emergency order in response to the pandemic. And it basically just brought a um, stop to most of the real estate activity in Palm Beach. And people didn't know where they were. We had been on a fairly good roll from 19, um, I'm sorry, 2019 to uh, the beginning of the pandemic. But that pause was momentary. And by the middle of May, suddenly when I would call realtors and they would say, things are picking up. Well, they didn't just pick up. They they started speeding up. Uh, first went the rentals. Every rental property in town was rented. Then went the single-family homes. Um, as people sought what I've always said is the, the haven effect. They, they wanted um, homes with spaces where they could distance themselves from their neighbors. If they were in a high rise in New York and were coming to Palm Beach, they didn't necessarily want to be in a, uh, uh, a condominium with lots of people around them. Mm -hmm. They really wanted that single family um, experience um, with a yard and a background and a loggia and those sorts of things. So very quickly, those houses disappeared from the market as well. And people suddenly realized, well, people, want to buy this house i'll put it back on the market or you know and you know move on um what happened is with supply and demand we started seeing that the supply just began um, um drying up and anytime as we all know from first year economics anytime the supply dries up the prices go uh, sky high as long as the demand is there and the buyer demand continued. Uh, people changed a little bit what they were looking for simply because they couldn't find it. So whereas people before 
were, you know, getting a nice house and spending a reasonable amount of money, if you can say that about Palm Beach, uh, suddenly we were seeing uh, people choose different sorts of homes. Uh, the single family market became very, by the end of 21, the single family market had become so competitive that it was very difficult to find a single family home uh, of any sort. Renting one was practically impossible. And finally, people turned to condominiums, which uh, had been a market that had been severely um, overglutted for a long, long time. And as people could not find uh, the single family home that they were looking for, then they uh, turned to the condominium market. The con- the condo market, where does it stand right now in terms of inventory? Where- Where is it? Um, Where we are right now with inventory is tight. Um, And it's sort of a surprise because I think three years ago, uh, it wasn't that you couldn't give away a condominium, but there was a lot of condominiums available on the market. Well, once that shift we saw into um, single family homes becoming so much uh, tighter and people uh, just decided, well, what we'll do instead is we'll choose a condominium and perhaps live there for a while. And then as something comes onto the market, then we'll be able to um, uh, get a single family home. And as a result, right now we have, and these numbers are just remarkably low. We have 45 or so um, single family homes on the market. Uh, We have uh, two townhouses, and as far as open land, uh, about six properties that don't have um, teardown houses on them. As far as condominiums, in both the north uh, end uh, of Midtown, around Midtown Beach, and the south end on Condominium Row, we have a total right now of 56 condominiums on the market. Uh, You know, just just a staggeringly low number because there were always uh, hundreds of um, condominiums on the market. So finding anything right now in Palm Beach is a very difficult uh, task. And one of the things that's led is to a lot of off-market deals. Uh, people are, uh, you know, not at, not even advertising their homes or, or, or getting their realtors to publicize the demand less. One of the problems there is that a lot of sellers and to look at these low, low inventory numbers, a lot of sellers just aren't really sure if I sell my house, yes, I'll get a great price, but where do I go? You know, how am I going to find uh, someplace comparable? Even if I'm downsizing, how, uh, how do I find the quality of home um, that I'm looking for uh, so, that, so that my lifestyle doesn't change? And that has been a challenge. Tell us a little bit about what's been happening with the pricing. And what's happened here is we have set a bar that is incredibly high. In this last season that just ended, and that would have been, um, you know, from last fall until um, this May, what, what we saw is nine sales hit $39 million or more, which is an extraordinary number. Uh, so basically, you've got nine estates selling for upwards of $39 million, and some quite a bit more than $39 million. And one of the, uh, I call it the flip heard around the world. And it was really when people woke up that this idea that um, something that has sold uh, can can within months or uh, at the very least a year uh, practically double in value. And that's where we are. And what happened, it was a a house on Island Road, a fairly new house. Um, it was purchased in January of 2021 for $26.5 million. It had been on the market for a while. $26.5 million seemed like a very good price, and that was January of 2021. By May of um, 2021, just a few months later, it had sold for $41.7 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was an amazing uh, increase, and it really made people sort of stand up and look. Nationwide, we have concerns about inflation, recession, uh, Fed raising interest rates, and so the housing markets become something of a question mark. But Palm Beach has always been an island sanctuary to itself, I think, very largely. Do you see, from what you can see at this point, is 2022 on track to be possibly another record-setting year or to... Magic ball. Let me get out my crystal, uh, and and I'll, I'll I'll let you know exactly what's going to happen. What I've talked to folks, we have set bars so high um, with our um, with the sales that we've had. 
I don't expect the prices to necessarily come down, but I do think that we won't we may not see the frenzy of activity. Um, as far as the economic uh, uh, drivers that you mentioned, uh, certainly people are aware of it, and certainly they are reacting to it. Some of those concerns may have an effect, uh, but there are a lot of quiet deals handled in Palm Beach, and if someone really wants to be in Palm Beach, which I think in many ways people still do want to be in Palm Beach, then they will find a way. Daryl Hoffines, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, well, thank you, William. I appreciate you having me here and uh, to the Civic Association, too. Thanks for joining us this week on Studio 33480. We'll see you next time. Studio 33480 is brought to you by the Palm Beach Civic Association, our sponsor, Finley Galleries, and our viewers. We welcome your thoughts on how our programming can best serve our members and residents.